we are going to discuss pointers to objects now as we know what is mean by the pointer right in the last class we discussed the pointers as well so, so just like other pointers pointers to objects are declared by placing the asterisk in front of an object pointer's name just like a data type we use for the different data types we use the, that particular type of pointer to hold that particular data type variable similarly we can hold the object of that particular class using that particular pointer right so syntax for the class name asterisk object pointer and followed with the semicolon so this is our syntax you have to create this using a small program so in the program i am just uh, declaring the class my class in which i am declaring the int i as a variable that is a member variable of my class then in the public i am uh, declaring or rather i am defining the method that is read method where it is reading the value and putting that value into the i variable okay so this is a parameter call which will assign the value of parameter to that particular variable i next you are having a, a next method int get int that will return the i value whatever the i value has assigned that value will be returned okay so this task i want to do with the help of pointers to objects okay so now let us go to the main function where execution is there so in main function i can declare the my class object okay this one object is ob and another is the pointer to the object so that is followed with the asterisk object pointer so name of that pointer is asterisk object pointer object pointer is followed with asterisk that means it becomes a pointer okay so then uh, there we are have to initialize that pointer which address it needs to keep so the next line is object pointer is equal to ampersand ob that means you are holding this object pointer the address of object ob which is the object of my class right so it will hold the address and it needs to point out or it will point out the memory location where the object's values are stored and this object is my class object ob so next statement now once you <coughs> initialize this in pointer you have to do the pointer you have to access the method of that class so when you access the method of class you have to use arrow operator with the name of pointer now the pointer name is object pointer along with object pointer you don't use the dot operator you have to use the arrow operator then the name of the method now we have used the two methods one is the read method that is the parameter call here with the read you are passing the value 10 so the 10 value now this call will go and uh, call the read method in the my class so read method in that 10 value will be put up into the i variable so i value becomes 10 i value becomes 10 so after that this has come across again the next statement when it returns back see out statement is there where you are having the object pointer call again and you are pointing object pointer arrow operator get int method now when you call this when you call this this will be jump to again the int get int method of class now what is written into that you are returning the i value you are returning the i value here so the this particular method will return the i value over here so the c out and the value of i will be printed over here so value of i is nothing but 10 right so you will get the output as 10 you will get the output as 10 similarly you can use you can use the pointers to object whenever you want that to use the concept of like dynamic allocation memory allocation then use the pointer concept okay so similarly we'll have the next pointer concept that is this pointer this pointer no ma'am hello to object 
and we have access the method with the help of pointers as well as arrow operator and the method name so while when you are calling the method you have to use which whichever is the name of the pointer followed with the arrow operator and the method name then that call is made and the whatever the definition is written for that particular method it will be executed and you will get the output okay so next is the concept of this pointer so now this pointer it holds the address this pointer means it holds the address of current object in simple words you can say that it points to the current object of the class it points to the it points to the current object of that class it can be used to pass current object as a parameter to the another method and it can be used to refer the current class instance variable so when we use or uh, whatever the name as the this pointer is saying so this pointer reflects to the current object whatever the current object you are going to use you have to use that with the help of the instance of that particular class okay so at that time it will hold only the current object value that is the work of the this pointer right so it will have a program referring to the demo class demo here we are using the int num char ch okay so as whenever we call the object we have a object at that time suppose we have a multiple object okay right now here only one object i have put but when i put the object object 1 object 2 object 3 likewise then i have to use the this pointer for showing that particular object value okay so so showing that particular object value mm -hmm. i have to yes mute mm -hmm. your it's the copy of the member function within it it would be a considerable overhead on system memory especially if function happens to be lengthy right so uh, we have a concept of this pointer what each, each method of a class contains a pointer of its class type named as this pointer this pointer contains the address of the object through which the function is being invoked typically generated by the compiler this pointer is automatically generated by the compiler when an object is created if you don't specify this pointer till it is there okay that means whenever you call a particular object that for that particular object that this pointer is working implicitly that is uh, this pointer is working implicitly similarly a programmer can also reference this pointer explicitly also okay so suppose i want that i want to show this pointer explicitly then i use that this pointer and now because this is a pointer for accessing any variable or any method it has to use a arrow operator because it is a pointer right so for example suppose you have the uh, class demo in that you have created two variables num and ch then you are ha having some certain uh, function set values in that you are assigning the int num and char ch the values which you are passing okay so using the actual object variables now for this particular moment for this particular moment in this method the current object will be assign the values current object will be assign the values how by using this pointer okay so this then arrow operator num is equal to the accessing values num now this num value is assigned which is passing value what passing value 100 you are passing so 100 value is assigned to this value okay of which object obj object then similarly this ch is equal to ch now whatever value a is passing you are assigning towards this ch see the variable names are same but you are currently having this object that is obj object variables similarly you can use this to display out okay so for display out also you can uh, you can use the values okay of current num and ch now when you are saying that you are pointing right you are pointing towards that then you are going to say that this is a current object now for example in this main method demo obj class name is demo and the current 
object you have declared as obg right so suppose you are uh, now suppose you are using one more object obg1 right obg1 are you getting this uh, have can you see the screen obj obj dot set value yes. what it will assign 100 comma a so this will be assigned here and this pointer now in this case obj is a obj variables are used here right suppose next time i will use another object object 1 obj 1 okay so that time this pointer is which one currently uh, referring for obj 1 for obj1 member variables okay understood this one if suppose i am again creating another object then it will be holding for the that particular object understood this pointer reflects for the current object are you getting this yes ma'am yes so next is pointers versus arrays we know pointers and we have seen the arrays also in the first unit right so declaration in c++ is how you are writing this uh, arrays type and the variable name and the size and in this type and pointer variable name that means pointers are nothing but it is just a reference variable which will reference to the particular address okay particular address now this is a variable where it will hold the address of the some another variable then the next is stores array stores the value of the variable of homogeneous data type similarly in pointers also it stores the address of the another variable but of the same data type as we have seen the pointers also wants to have the variable address but uh, it should be of the same data type if it is a pointer of integer it should a pointer as a data type of integer it, if it is a pointer of float it should be a data type which will refer as float value uh, likewise then an array of pointer can be generated an array of pointers can be generated similarly a pointer to an array can be generated an array of pointers can be generated array we can create array of pointers similarly a pointer to an array can be generated to a particular array we can point out an array can store the number of elements mentioned in the size of array variable okay array is a variable it will hold the multiple numbers similarly a pointer variable can store the address of only one variable at a time when whenever uh, we want to store the address we have to use initialization with the help of the ampersand operator in pointer now used to allocate fixed size memory it is and it is used for the dynamic memory allocation Point, now pointers are using dynamic memory allocation and arrays are using fixed size memory allocation okay so it is fixed if suppose you are uh, having assigned the five values that five values will be in a fixed memory location and it is like dynamic memory one time the address is uh, changing another time the address is other address okay so your operating system will not give the same address again then accessing array elements using the pointer here the arrays array how you are writing the array by using the dimension value so variable name of the dimension is 5 here is equal to you are assigning the values five values you are assigning okay then you are using a pointer variable ptr is equal to ampersand uh, array which value you are showing here second value okay second value accordingly when array element starts array element starts with the zeroth location so the zeroth location covers the five first location covers the two second location covers 9 third location covers 4 and fourth location covers 1 right so that means what you are you are having a address inside this pointer variable of the memory location where the 9 is keeping okay 9 is kept so here that address is stored here now when you point out a uh, second index of the array and in the second index pointer ptr now what this is meaning indexing this is the meaning that value stored at that address value stored at that address is 9 we are not printing address we are printing the value stored at that address using pointer 
So the output becomes the value in the second index is 9. The value in the second index of array is 9. How it comes? There is a pointer together. So for loop here you have used. Then you are assigning elements uh, into the array with the help of for loop and see in statement. Then you have used pointer PTR here. PTR is equal to A. What does it mean? PTR is equal to A. That means you are initializing your pointer variable to the base address of an array. Pointer initializing with the base address of an array. So array is A of 4, right? So pointer will hold, pointer will hold the 0th location of your array, starting location of your array and it will point as it is initialized. Okay. So if you are initialized like this, PTR is equal to A, that means it is holding the first position of array, that address. Okay. Then for loop you are showing with the help of a pointer, that pointer how you are showing asterisk PTR plus I. Now when you are showing this, I value is increasing because you have made for loop. It is not static you are increasing the i loop. So initially when started i is equal to 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, see out. Now value at this, value at this. So value of the, this address is first time it becomes the a of 0. Then second time it becomes a of 1. Third time a of 2. Fourth time a of 3. Likewise it will increment and you will get the value. You will get the value. Whatever values you have inserted via this scene statement, you will get as output of this using the pointer and this will uh, next you will display out because you have written the cout statement. It will be displayed out on the screen. Okay. So this is a small program showing array and pointer concept. Similarly, we have some observations about this. So array is same as the ampersand array 0. If you write this way, it is correct. Right. Both the ways are correct. If you write pointer ptr is equal to array, it is right. Similarly, if you write a pointer PTR is equal to ampersand array of 0, it is also right. Then array of 2 is equal to 7 normal array access. PTR 2 is equal to 7 treat pointer like an array. Similarly, you have a pointer uh, asterisk that is a value at the address PTR plus 2 which will have the 7 value. Similarly, array plus 2 is equal to 7. This is an array uh, showing the address. Okay, likewise we can treat uh, um, operations on the Arrays using pointers, array of pointer addresses of array elements, p of 0, p of 1, p of 2, p of 3, value stored is 10, 20, 30, 40, addresses are this one. Okay, so the statement meaning of this is this representation 10, 20, 30, 40. This is a value which will be denoted by the pointer, also the uh, array, also. We can use same. Okay. So it is holding the values, four values, but initially start with the P of 0. Always the start with the P of 0. Next, similarly array of pointers example is one more example putting here. So showing the array and showing the for loop and we are using this for uh, showing the pointer and its value with the help of the pointer variable. With the help of pointer variable. Just go through it. We have used the const variable max equal to 4. And in that we are assigning the values 10, 20, 30, 40 and we are uh, assigning the first address that is the base address A of 0 and uh, to the pointer P of I then pointer we are increasing that value okay P of I similarly okay so next time P of I will be P of 1 next time P of I will be P of 2 then P of 3 likewise this will hold the value. 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. Uh, function pointer. This is a concept function pointer, but generally not in uh, that much used. Function uh, or the pointer contains the addresses of the function. We can have the just like a variable uh, we use to hold the address of another variable. Similarly, we can use the pointer to hold the address of the function. Okay. So function name is starting address of the code that defines the function. As we know that the operating system requires uh, to assign some address to the functions. Right. So function has some address. Now this starting address of a function is kept into the pointer. Now we are using a pointer variable for referring to the function. Earlier we were using for, for variable or for the array variable. 
for a simple variable or for array variable now we are using for the function pointer that means pointing uh, particular pointer to a function so the syntax for that is reference type, uh, return type then function pointer and the argument list for example if the function return type is integer then the pointer name that is with uh, asterisk and the name then the passing arguments so passing arguments is having the integer because the return type is giving the integer so the passing variables are int comma int two variables you are passing so this is the syntax for example then function pointers can be passed to the function and written from the function stored in an array assigned to the other function pointers also so program for discussing the pro, uh, function pointer is given you we can have this avoid one int a comma int b c out a plus b this is a statement inside this then void 2 int a comma int b this is a again one more c out statement a plus b now as i've told you i want to declare is this as a pointer to a particular function okay so i've written two functions i've written two functions but now i want to use a pointer which will access this the memory address of this function Okay, I've written two functions, one function and two function. Name is one function and two function and the parameter passed. Okay, so see out statement is written there. So when I write this in a main function, I will write with the help of as the data type means return type void is the, there. So void, then the asterisk and the pointer name FPTR I have written, then the in bracket in comma int because I'm passing two integer values. So this is what the function pointer uh, and then I am assigning for this. I need to assign the value. Which one? For the function. So FPTR is equal to 1. This is a address. This is a address which will be stored in this pointer FPTR. All right. And because it is a pointer, now it will actually call out the function. And how to call out the function? Using the FPTR in bracket any values you can pass. Now you are passing suppose 12 comma 3 then this function will jump to this value and it will execute this. Now 12 plus 3 how much it is? It is 15. So value is printed over here is 15 output. 15. Yes. Next time I am using the address of another function in this pointer variable fptr is equal to 2. Next time the cursor will jump now the address will be hold of this function 2 first was 1 so it was holding this address now next time it is holding the function 2 address right now i am just calling actual function fptr in bracket 12 comma 2 now this will go here it will assign this value a plus b 12 plus 2 and you will out c out statement will become as what will be the sorry uh, this is actually minus point Oh. Yes, so it is 12 minus 2, right? It is yes. 12 minus 2 becomes 10. Output is 10. Understood this? What we have done? We have initialized that pointer with the address of the function where it wants to jump. Okay. Instead of the normal operation, we have used just pointer to hold the address of the function. To hold the address of the function. Similarly, function pointer to a class member also we can reflect uh, here. Now, suppose the class data we have written, then we are having a function f and float value you are returning something. This is a general one function is written. Okay. Now, it has a problem here. Uh, when you write this actually, then data scope resolution operator and the pointer you have declared of type function is float. Okay. You must write the uh, passing that is float when you declare the object you have to assign this because this is a class member f so you are assigning the fp2 this is a pointer which will reflect the address of data and what is that data data is a class name scope resolution operator and then the name of the function function name is f so what you are doing here you are assigning the address of f into the fp2 this is a pointer then you are calling this with the help of object. You are calling this with the help of object dot pointer fp2 and passing value is 20 and passing value is 20. Okay. So this is a doesn't meaning in this 
but uh, we should know the concept only we are not using that much this concept okay function pointer to class member but we should know the concept okay then the function pointer to the class member function similarly we can use the member function uh, as well so member functions are like here is the sample given number and then one and then two one two and the number function these are the three functions and then we are using the uh, same way same way the class name scope resolution operator pointer and the call to the that data type data type is integer so we are written the integer here integer then number pointer because this is a pointer it has to initialize and it has initialized with the help of the class name scope resolution operator and the name of the function now this time it is function one so it is now holding the address of this function and actual call you have made with the help of object dot star number pointer similarly next time again you are holding the value of the another method this is a class member functions okay so again see out object dot star number pointer in this way you can print here the values of this uh, values of this particular member functions of particular class with the help of function pointers only thing you have to remember that you have to use asterisk sign before the va that variable then it becomes the pointer and followed with the initialization of which method you want to call so ampersand before that similarly you will get that particular output accordingly okay so return i plus 1 you will get 0 plus 1 that is one output here and next time you will get the 2 when you are calling this to i plus 2 that is a two output and concept like pointers to pointers so one pointer can hold the address of another pointer this is the indirection or the chain of the pointer so pointer to a first uh, pointer contains the address of the second pointer it can be shown in the figure okay so this is a one pointer can you see this number is stored in ten, that number value is 10 some address is given and this is stored in a pointer this is the first pointer now another pointer you are using and this pointer is dptr so dptr now holds the address of this pointer now this becomes a chain that means one pointer is holding the another pointer one pointer is holding the another pointer and this another pointer holds the value similarly you can increase this chain okay so next concept is pointers to derived classes pointers can be declared to point base or the derived classes as well as so this is the important concept pointers to derived classes as we have already seen in the inheritance this concept is there that we can use the base class pointer which will access the, that method so pointers to derived class how this points to the base class object for example uh, pointers to the derived class your base class is written then derived class is written in this when we write a base class pointer and the derived class object see base class pointer and derived class object then base class pointer is equal to ampersand derived class object that means it is holding now pointer is holding the address of the derived class and we can access its method accordingly already we have done this part in the our example of shape example in that we have used the rectangle and the circle class okay so inheritance in that the pointers to the derived class with the help of the base class pointer we can use this concept write the pointer for the base class and we assign the object of the derived class and we will call the methods of the derived class okay so similarly derived class pointers to the derived class here we are actually assigning the methods also so it will be clear from this example how we are assigning the methods so base class is having one method void show derived class is having the one method that is the display okay so x is the um, present variable of base class and y is the present variable of derived class so because it is a derived class it can access the inherit through inheritance the base class variable x now in the main function execution when you are writing the base class b1 base class pointer you are using base pointer ptr now ptr is equal to ampersand b1 okay now this will have pointer that will be assigning the value is equal to 10 because it is a pointer you cannot use the dot operator for showing the method or the for showing the variable you have to use it as the 
you have to use as arrow operator. So you are assigning this arrow operator x is equal to 10 value, then pointer show this 10 value will be there assigned to this particular method. Then next is the derive d1. For derive pointer again you are using, but this time you are using for ptr1 uh, initializing the value of the d1 that is the object of derived class. Similarly, you can assign the x value that is 10 and for y value 20 and ptr display. So now this time x value is 10, you can replace the value so you will get the change. Okay, so that is the x value 10 and y value 20, these are the output for the this d1 class, d1 is a derived class. Okay, understood this one? So we, we can also return the pointers from the function concept, we can uh, return the null pointer that is the null value is the special value that means the pointers is not pointing at anything as you know that that is what void right so if you write the null that means it is initialized to the null value nothing no address it is just having the initialization to null value so it will just return out the zero value so null pointer or address so there is no additional value that a pointer can hold a null value it will hold right similarly a void pointer is there null pointer means nothing and void pointer means it holds the address of any data type but it is not associated with the integer float or something like double. So syntax for this is void pointer ptr. The size of the void pointer varies system to system for uh, 16 bit. Okay. Likewise it will for 32 bit also it varies. In C++ you cannot assign the address of variable of one type to a pointer of another type like you cannot do this int pointer ptr double d is equal to 9 and then ampersand d this is not happening this will make error can't assign double to int to avoid it to make use of the general purpose pointer that is a void pointer so what is the usage of the void pointer if you want to avoid such type of situation you can use the void pointer okay so likewise the one example of void pointer is kept here so you can assign the void pointer void ptr float f is equal to 2.3 that you are assigning this float variable to those pointer it is all right now because float and void it is combination can exist okay so you are calling this similarly and you are writing the output as it is storing the address so this c out statement will put out the address and lastly it will put out the value that is value at that address 2.3 now this we have come to the end of this particular unit unit number 2 now case study you can use the Firefox developed using C++ the link is provided you can go through that link and do this. Okay, so any query